Another episode of Map Mind. There's an echo in here. Um, I'm here with JJ. JJ was my high school wrestling captain. Oh, not high school, college. College. College wrestling captain at UC Davis, and uh, he stayed on to coach for several years afterwards. Uh, Pac-10, two-time Pac-10 finalist and cha champion back then, back when there was a Pac-10. Yeah. Shows your age. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then uh, he's also a uh, 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 college. Let's see, University Nationals, High School Nationals, All-American, uh, several times All-American? Uh, University, Adrian Greco, and uh, Fila Jr., All-American. And then you stayed on to wrestle, I think you took third at the Dave Schultz, and then you... So I stayed on out. International after, Yeah, after well, college right? I stayed on and tried to... You know, you give, it, give it a college you try, and deal, a make, it a, make, it a, make it a run at the national team, and uh, took third in the Dave Schultz. And You made it a great go, dude. <laughs> um, uh, but one thing, one thing that I noticed about the dynamic of the UC Davis wrestling team uh, it dramatically changed when JJ came on, when he graduated and came on board as a as a coach uh, for the better. <laughs> and um, you know, so we're gonna ask him a few questions about what he focused on as a coach. Oh, yeah. What, so, what are some things that you focused on as as a university, you know, Division One wrestling coach? Uh, one of the things I, I focused on is, so from a coaching perspective, was just trying to uh, learn my guys and learn like what motivated them, what what kind of encouragement they needed at different different points during the during practice and during the the matches, and um, and then a, a heavy focus on drilling. For me, when I went from trying to learn tech, technique to being forced to teach technique, like during summer camps, and uh, when I for me just the process of figuring out like a, um, like a system mm -hmm. to teach it, mm -hmm. uh, as I explained it to somebody else, it made me understand all that so much more. Mm -hmm. And so bringing that back as a, as a coach after I kind of spent a lot of this time transitioning from an athlete to a coach to then trying to figure out how to teach these positions, I found my own technique just getting a lot better. Yeah, better. Unfortunately, blooming maybe a little bit late for college. When you say you understood your system, or you had to think about it to understand that system, what are some common things that you found in creating a system and understanding it? So for me, that kind of came about through summer camps, through teaching wrestling in summer camps. And uh, sometimes I was even forced to teach technique that I didn't, wasn't like something that I would, that you would do. do all the time, right? But, um, you know, you, just, you can think back to like, a summer camp that you went to and they're showing a uh, single leg series or a single leg uh, finishing series and just going through the process of if he does this then I do this if he does this then this is open if if, if I'm doing the, doing this and he counters me here he's opening himself up for something else and then drilling each of those positions over and over and over again and for me like I said like switching my mind to then when I explain them to somebody else is when I really knew that I so that kind of bringing that back to my guys yeah. um, in college, just kind of breaking down technique like that, and it's nothing like new or novel, right? Learning yeah. technique and like series and, and stuff like that. So that wasn't super new. An another, uh, but it's something that helped me like technically get continue to get a lot better, even though I was done wrestling in college or whatever. And then just something that I've always done is just like a a level of inten intensity as far as you know, you're not allowed to put on the mat and just continuing to fight through these positions and putting yourself in bad positions and forcing yourself to, to fight off of them. And, um, just the ability to, to be in an utter knock, knockdown drag out with somebody like somebody. Elliot Kelly, but walk up, but afterwards be friends and brothers and all that stuff. I think so. actually that's a really important thing. So how do you create, how do you maintain a healthy training atmosphere as a, as a coach? So maybe like in the practice room, I mean, you. Speaking for art, we went hard. Like, there was no like easy practice, as far as I can remember. But it didn't matter, you know. However, however hard we went, um, you know, it was almost that was appreciated, and we became better friends as a result of doing that. How does that dynamic work? How does that exist? I think that anytime you have a group of guys that are like working hard and are willing to push themselves to that, that. You know, when you're really exhausted and you're pushing through those those barriers, you're going to have people 
um, come together and afterwards, as long as people are reasonable, you know, you, we're going to get along even though we, yeah. we're fighting during practice. I, the times that I have seen division uh, arise in a team or in a club or in a workout area, it has been from uh, a lot of times guys when they're vying for the same spot right. or, um, or maybe in a room where guys are, are uh, competing for um, notoriety or pecking order or something like that. Yeah. And uh, in college, I see it a little bit because you know in, in college wrestling, one guy wrestles the other. If you're a second guy, you don't, don't. you don't wrestle, you stay home. Yeah. Um, and so there is some of that division arises sometimes. People, you know, you're my friend, so now I'm on your side of this, and I don't like that guy because oh, you yeah. guys are, you know, and like little cliques and stuff form in that. But I, but outside of, it's mainly just pride, and most of the guys that I hang out with just don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that, you know, just really um, working hard, being willing to push ourselves, uh, fight through these bad positions, and being tired and all that stuff has made us go closer. And at the end of the day, I don't really care if you're tougher. Is all about just like a process of getting better, yeah. you know, especially as like an adult. Yeah. Now, yeah. so I think I, I don't have nearly the problem with it. But then again, um, you know, I'm not mean you aren't competing for a spot on the national team or something like sure. that, and then being forced to be around each other all day every day. That's a t it's a tough thing, and I, I don't I don't have like the the magic. Yeah. The magic for that. Yeah. So. Some things I noticed you did really good as a coach, uh, or things that I remember um, really helping me was you talked about like really working with the individual and teaching or coaching each individual differently. Um, how did you do that? What are some things that you focused or emphasized as a coach? It's hard without like talking about a specific person, but I yeah. think that if, if you are in, in charge of other people, it doesn't matter how, you know, what facet, if it's coaching or if it's in business or if it's in you know, some kind of some kind of leadership. If you treat everybody the same, and you think they're going to get, they're going to react the same, and they're going to give you the same work product, and you think they should just adapt to your your leadership style, you're not going to be as effective mm -hmm. as if you um, truly know the person, mm -hmm. you care about them, and then through trial and error, you find out that hey, you know, like if I'm harder on this person. Uh, respond. They respond well, and this person doesn't really. Re they almost shut down a little bit, yeah. and you're you're trying to you. You're not giving them an out. Like they still have to spend the time in the room. They still have to get their butt kicked like everybody else. Yeah. But um, it's just how you encourage them during those trials, and what the, the times of things that you say to them. I feel like um, you know, and I see it a lot with my kids now. I have three daughters, okay. and you know. Uh, some of the, even like we've started to do some jiu-jitsu stuff with them or, you know, I coach soccer or whatever else, like, as far as like coaching them, like they're, even between my own three girls, there's a big difference in how they react to, yeah. um, one of them super sensitive, you look at her direction, you know, that, and she's like, thinks she did something wrong and she like is always trying to please you. Yeah. So you can be, you know, I can really harm that or encouragement in something by being too hard on her. Where my, my middle, my middle one, um, you know, I don't know if I could ever be. <laughs> she just lets everything like go off, and she's she's back doing what doing so what she wants bounce, to do. things bounce like they bounce yeah. off of. It just bounces off of her. It doesn't yeah. even. But the other girl, it's like you look at her and like it's like the end of the world. Or right. And I found that you know bringing it back in, in college, there were guys like that in college. I mean, there were there were guys that wanted um, to please coach the, sure. the guy that wanted to be that needed that that like encouragement, and yeah. you could get a ton out of them by feeding into that, by giving them those compliments, by, uh, even if they weren't the best kid in the room, by, by you know, doing, doing certain things and, and, and uh, giving them leadership roles or giving them responsibilities that then they would take pride in. Whereas other guys don't care, don't care at all about that. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. they, they, wanna, they wanna just, you know, nose it or whatever. They just wanna grind it out and, uh, and they need to, for you to be yelling at them and, uh, you know, go harder, go faster, you're not giving me everything, you know, like that real, some some of them need like negative reinforcement really to get the best out of them. So I think studying the people that you're involved in or with or you're leading and then, I think most coaches get in, or leaders in, in general, get, it's a pride thing. They think that their students or their, um, or their athletes should react to them because their leadership style is either the best in their own mind 
or it's what the sport requires. Right. You know, there's some wrestling coaches or jiu-jitsu coaches that would say, you know, you, you mentally have to be like this or you're not meant to be in the mat room. But you're not gonna get out of, you're not gonna get the most out of, out of your athletes that, that aren't the same mindset as you. Right. Everybody that's not the same mindset as you, they're gonna be underperforming their potential. So. Interesting. Um. And it, it could also go true too the other way. Like, if you're always super soft with people, it could work against. Right. There could, could be that kid out there that like needs to be like, yelled needs you to kind of yell at him, push him, and like put him in a bad spot, shove yeah. him against the wall, make him fight off there, don't let him give up, you know, like that. And then he's gonna come through that better on the other side. But it just, it's just being a student, a student of your students. Interesting. That's really so. interesting. Um, how does that play into like? So obviously that's the training part, right? Right. But let's say. How does that play into like in the moment coaching or like on the corner? Yeah, maybe in the corner or getting them ready, you know, 10 minutes, five minutes before their match, like getting them mentally ready to go out there and give it their best. Like what, you know, let's say you have, you know, maybe it might be easier to coach with uh, or t talk about it with examples, but um, what's, how do you, how would you differentiate that? What are some things that you might try in doing that? Um. I mean, I think the easiest, like, extremes are some, some people need to be left alone. I mean, I, I, I coach some kids who are just, like, in the corner, head, their headphones on, they're getting ready or whatever. Um, you know, they're, they're doing what they, what they need to do. Um, go over and check on them, make sure, you, you know, I, I believe that people respond well when they know you care about them. Mm -hmm. So I, I try and make a personal connection with the people that I'm coaching. I should care that they, ha that they feel... You know, one thing that did frustrate me as a looking at other coaches is coaches that didn't seem to care about their performers. You know, whether they had written them off or um, or they just I don't know, it just seemed weird to me. Yeah. You know, and so maybe some of them didn't have a personal relationship. I mean, it's easy for me because I'm so close to you, to the, in age to the guys that I was coaching in college. Yeah. Um, so sometimes you know, coming over, let let them know, you know, whatever. And on the extreme, I my coach in in. Uh, my junior year at state, we were like warming up, and he knew I just like I had a slow start, like a lot, and I needed to like get going, not just like physically. I didn't, you know, he didn't need to burn me out by having me do sprints, but I needed something needed to like I needed to start fighting. I needed to get the fight started early, and I remember like he took me. We were like in the tunnel, at, uh, the arena. I think it was in Stockton. In Stockton. Time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all concrete floors and concrete walls, and me and him basically started like a full-on like five-minute brawl <laughs> on the concrete, yeah. uh, like shooting. Wow. Uh, like all like wrestling, like a full wrestling match <laughs> against the. I mean, just being dirty a little bit too. Yeah. But I, I kind of always, it kind of always, when people were. That's dirty, what you need. That's what I needed. It made me laugh. Like when people were dirty with me, like I thought it was funny. You know, <laughs> rubbing against you know the pain aspect of it. And then, but it got me to that point where I was like, I was ready to go. It was just something that I needed. I, and I think that he knew that from spending a lot of time with me huh. um, leading up to that. And obviously, those are two extremes, and, and guys are everywhere. I'm, but you know, as a coach, the other thing is I tried to focus on meeting the needs of you know finding finding my guys, and I did this better. I feel like my first year than I did like maybe towards the end when I was getting a little distracted, transitioning to other things. But like like even at a tournament, like what do you need? What do you need to get ready for this match? Do you need a partner? You know, I'll okay. I'll take off the suit and I'll come wrestle. Like if yeah. you don't have it, I want to make sure that you need. It. What do you need to 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 prepare to couple hours before you need to go back to the hotel do we need to get you some food like what are trying to find those things out and then meeting those needs so that my guys have less and less to worry about when we do this. and not everybody has a coach not everybody has a yeah. uh, not everybody has a coach that's you know a ratio of one to ten or mm -hmm. even better one to three or something like that yeah. a lot of guys are 30 guys on the team and everybody's going you know depending on your sport or what you're doing but yeah. um, you know trying to get rid of as much of those problems for my guys what about so what about as a competitor yourself right so you competed pre-coaching yeah right as a coach you know high school or as, as a wrestler in high school and college and then you started to coach more actively in college right or uh, post-college and compete during those years as well right. what are some things that maybe changed for you that helped you or things that you started to emphasize or focus on uh in order to, to perform uh, maybe technically, obviously you talked about your drilling, right? right? Um, and like being able to understand your system. 
um, and even, even other systems that you didn't do. But then what about uh, mentally, physically, um, you know, your conditioning? What are some things that you focused on, I guess, more, me more mentally? Uh, the things that you just, you, you did? I well, uh, the, the thing that comes to mind the most, and I'm not sure if this answers your question or not, but I had a coach as I was, like, getting ready after college. And, uh, um, yeah, you worked with some great coaches. Yeah, I, was, I got to spend a little bit of time at the, at the training center. And, you know, they, they had watched me wrestle in there. You know, they're like, you are really good from this position. And I think it was like an underhook and a two-on-one mm -hmm. in wrestling. And they're like, they just like refuse to wrestle anywhere other than there. Yeah. Force, force your style on them and just wrestle there. And if you're not wrestling there, you're trying to get there. And if somebody puts you in another position that you don't like, you want to get out of it. I think that we get impatient. You know, we were just talking about this a little bit. We try and do, we try and force our styles on people. And if it doesn't go well, then we go, okay, well, I'm going to go to my second best. Right. And really, I think that if you just refuse to not wrestle in that one position where you want to be in and just are constantly fighting, and then just continue to dominate that one position, the one position where I am better than my opponent, because uh, he might be better in a lot of other positions. So why would I choose to wrestle him there? Just because he, just because I feel like he won't give me his arm. Right. I need to figure out a way to take it. Yeah. You know, like I, I need to force that on my opponent. Um, so I think working with uh, guys telling me that, um, whether it's Karen Boy or guys at the training center that really were uh, kind of giving me some of that feedback. Um, and then bringing that back to my college guys, because I can look around the room, and this goes back to coaching, you know, you know, some schools, some universities have specific styles for, you know, whole team. for their whole team, but, but like coaching an individual, finding out what, I have to know you well, what's your best technique, how do, and then how are we gonna get you into that spot as much as possible, and how are we gonna make sure that you're scoring off there? Um, so, I mean, conditioning, going back to your other question, I mean, I just, conditioning is conditioning, nobody likes it, but just wrestle. Do, do your cross training and just keep working and refuse to be in worse shape than the other guy. You know, I, I, there's no secret to conditioning, it's just hard work. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, Did you have any like mantras or, you know, obviously that's like the training part, but like, you know, what, what were you thinking, you know, 30 minutes before your match, 10 minutes before your match, during your match, post match? Like, what, what did that, uh, what were your thoughts? So during I, that, during that I think as I led up to the match, I was trying to keep myself calm because I had a, uh, you know, I get nervous. Everybody gets nervous, yeah. and so I'm uh, trying to keep myself calm and trying to think about the things that I do well. You um, know, I remember you telling me in college. You said, you said, <laughs> you said, uh -oh, the, <laughs> no, it's good. Uh, you said, you know, your body releases the same hormone, adrenaline. But it's your mind that decides if either you're either excited or you're nervous. Right. I remember you telling me that. Uh, yeah, I, I think. No, no, no. So, and, and I did. I do bring up things I forgot. You yeah, probably make. You probably made that. I up. probably made that shit up. Made that so up. Don't, on the don't, spot. don't check me versus a doctor. But <laughs> I, you know, I remember saying that uh, uh, the one thing I was like the pain, the pain reflex, right? or the response, whatever, it's nerves shooting shooting stuff to your brain and your brain decides how to interpret it. You can either, and how to respond, you can either tell yourself that it's pain it and it hurts and I don't like this, or you can say, you know, you like it. I like it, I love it, <laughs> give me more, you know? And that's kind of more of a practice thing, you know, yeah. and it's not, and that's mostly true, but I'm sure medically it's not 100% true. I mean, your body doesn't <laughs> like, so you start cutting my leg off and I'm not gonna be like, yeah, I love it. I like know? it. I love this, I love this. <laughs> but the, I mean, I think teaching people to love the grind, yeah. right? Yeah. Like in that, that close, you, I think so many people are looking for that submission in jiu-jitsu or the, or the blowout and wrestling of pin, which I always was, but, but, just thinking about the fact that if this is going to be a hard fought match, that's what I want to be. That's what I came that's here to I do. Mean. This is, I'm not trying to avoid that. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to grind it out. I'm here to, if, if it's going to be a grind, this is, this, that's why I'm at home. You know, I'm, I'm at home in a close fought match that we don't know who's going to win this thing. Um, so I think that mentally, you know, you know, for sure would be kind of like a mantra for me. Like I, you know, I'm gonna keep fighting this whole match. I'm not gonna lose these close. You know, I'm gonna try to lose these close, close matches as much as I can. 
and I'm going to do everything I can. One thing that I, I got to go, but um, one thing I kind of ended with is I'm going to make sure that I've done everything I can leading up to this so that if, if things don't go my way, it's not because I'm not prepared. You know, the truth of the matter is that guys, two people go in and one guy, one guy gets his hand raised and the other guy doesn't. And if you look at a tournament like the college, you know, college NCAs, there's a champion and there's a lot of guys that aren't winners, you know. And if you if you subscribe to that mantra that, you know, if you're not first, you're last, there's a lot of guys that are last place out there. And I think um, we're always fighting to be a winner and that's, you know, we're fighting to do our best. We're fighting, to, you know, you should you should always, I think wanting to win is important. But, um, but th that motivation should be taken into the preparation, mm -hmm. you know. And we should be doing everything we can to make sure that there wasn't there wasn't this one situation I hadn't drilled going in, especially when I knew that it was something I needed to work on. You know, for me it was uh, deciding my senior year that I'm just going to do two days, regardless of whether or not the team is it did them or not. I was going to get somebody else. I was going to come in and I'm going to do a, a second practice because I wanted to make sure that when it came to the end of the year that I knew that I had done what I could to prepare. And then I was felt confident stepping on that mat that I was ready to go to war. And if, if things went, you know, if they were close and it went the other way, then I did what I could to prepare. And there wasn't like a situation or a technique that I wish I would have studied that I did it, you know, leading up to it. I wish there was something I wish I would have done that I, that I didn't, you know. And I felt like that was true towards the end, even though it definitely I didn't go my way and I caught in college the way I wanted it to. Yeah. So, awesome. I know you gotta go. Anything yes. in closing? No, just I, I love the journey. Uh, fight for every point. You know, think about scoring. Don't think about winning. Just constantly trying to put points on the board or whatever sport you're doing. Take yeah. the advantage, or you know, really yeah. trying to take it to the person um, and uh, enjoy the training. You know, you're gonna get old one day. You know, like me, and uh, <laughs> and the training's not gonna be quite as easy. So. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the training, enjoy, enjoy the grind, enjoy your brothers that you're grinding along with. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother.